this. This is for interest only. Okay, coming up. The Delia Derbyshire archive arrived at the University of Manchester in 2007 and it's later transferred to the library for safe storage. I'm the curator that looks after the Delia archive and that means I look after the physical well-being, the storage of the collection. I also do everything I can to encourage people to use it. In the Delia Derbyshire archive there's the juvenile collection which includes exercise books, it includes some objects and includes some childhood drawings. Um, there's the adult working papers for when Delia Derbyshire was a practicing electronic composer and there's also the sound recordings. My interest in Delia Derbyshire has to go back to being a child of the sort of late 1970s and being brought up on a diet of things like Blake Seven and The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and of course Doctor Who. There's so much more to Delia than Doctor Who. I think it's to reduce her to that, however astonishing that is as a piece of music and it is. She was a major figure in terms of growing the British public's awareness and understanding of electronic music and the possibilities of electronic music and electronic sound. She encouraged the British people who were listening to this work to be open to new sounds, new ways of creating sound. The archive has grown since that initial donation in 2007 and now it can tell so much more of Delia's story actually from her childhood through to the last few years of her life. So what we've got here is uh, Delia's tape archive. It runs the whole gamut from her early work at the BBC, things like the inventions for radio, uh, the dreams, Amor Day, she does these in 1963, 1964. In addition to the finished recording, we've got in several instances uh, makeup reels where you can hear the component parts. This is the makeup tape for Amo Day, which was the second of the inventions for radio. And indeed, in some of these reels, you can actually hear Delia creating the sounds, manipulating her own voice slowly but surely, uh, transforming it into um, uh, its finished form. You then move through into sort of 1966, 1967, where she's really starting to develop her freelance activity. She's now working a lot in uh, theatre. What's interesting about the Macbeth um, sound design, you can hear her repurposing sounds she's done for earlier BBC productions. just demonstrates how resourceful she was in making use of her own back catalogue, if you like, and reinventing it. Much later, seven years after, it's assumed that she's withdrawn from creative activity. The last thing in the archive, in terms of Delia's musical output, is a cue for an unmade film from 1980. Uh, it's just about 90 seconds long, and it finds Delia working with uh, forms of technology that she hadn't worked with previously, so this tantalising glimpse of what might have been in the 1980s and beyond. I'm an electronic music composer and studio sound engineer, and for me, arriving in Manchester in 2007, it was really exciting to hear that one of the godmothers of electronic music, her archive, had been donated to University of Manchester. And um, yeah, quite quickly, I was really curious to see what would be in there and how to look back at the history of electronic music and how that might then be a way in to sort of inspire new music as well. Delving into these archives, and sort of uncovering this composer's working methods, if you like. I think there's something about the inner workings of how music is made that's being uncovered. 
There's a lot of these graphic scores, sort of doodles, and I think to a certain extent Delia was a bit of a visual artist. I love this one. To me it's like a cave landscape. You've got the different shapes, like these bubbles would have been sounds, or these circles, the triangles. You can actually see it's like it's, it's, it has a function as well, this harmonic progression. I love some of the language that's been used as well. So you've got here low, blurred, bloopy, which makes perfect nonsense to me. Um, and you've got bleeps on her tape label. So again, she's got sort of more technical words like the low chords and the tune high, but then you've got these more intuitive, personal language and all the maths that's going on, because obviously when she was using tape and she worked a lot with harmonics, the harmonic series, so there's a bit of Morse code there. I don't know, I find it a bit magical that uncovering that process. One piece that particularly inspired me was um, this, her Latin exercise book, because as a fellow language nerd, to come across just this little section here of her homework corrections at Emendata, and she's got the future of audio is. And when I saw that, it was like it just magnified and became this. But she was the future of audio. What they're doing was the future of audio, and did she, you know, she probably didn't know that when she was writing this. And I particularly like then, you've got the teachers in red writing, why write this and see me, which also chimed with the bit of a rebel in me. It is a one-way street, I'm aware of that. She's not here to tell me what things mean and what they don't mean. But for me, it sort of brings out the Alice in Wonderland in me, really. <laughs> Anyone can view her paper records in the reading room by prior appointment. We've made the collection more accessible by digitising the analogue reels. We've created a listening device to allow access to the sound recordings. DD Day is an arts organisation and we're interested in engaging with the archive and uncovering it and using it to inspire new work um, both by adults and children. It's a history of popular culture isn't it? A lot of the music that she did make was the soundtrack to a lot of people's childhoods and I think it's good for Delia to get that recognition and to have that um, validation really of her skills. Delia's music helped to change I think people's perspectives on what music was and what music could be in Britain. My hope is that Delia's archive will continue to inspire people to be sonically adventurous. And by my reckoning, the whole thing ends at 207. Ah, brum.